Hey there, happy days. Sharon Horrells from here, also known as Pajama Grandma, with a question. Are you putting your best foot forward? I ask that question of you. Of course, I ask that question of myself. Am I putting my best foot forward? Today is actually day 490 of documenting my journey or the journey from offline brick and mortar businesses, corporate America, you know, real world businesses in lots of different industries and transitioning that to the online world of marketing and sales and coaching and, and courses and whatever it is that we do online <clears throat> so that I can work where I want, when I want, with whomever I want, wearing whatever I want. And for me, that's often my pajamas. Now, is that, that's I guess the biggest question that comes up in my mind often, is being in my pajamas, is being and showing up on live video in my robes, putting my best foot forward. And, you know, I am having the same dilemma with that as I always do. Um, is it professional? Is it what people expect? Is it how I should be? Is it, um, does it bother people? Yes. Oh my gosh. My family goes ballistic every time they hear, I'm sure, from anyone else about me as the pajama grandma or if I say anything about it. I pretty much don't say anything about it around them anymore because I don't want to hear it. None of them are doing anything online. None of them are, are doing any videos. None of them are creating any content or adding things to the world in the online world. So uh, it's, it's difficult to listen to their feedback. They're embarrassed. Okay, should I be embarrassed? I don't know. You tell me, should I be embarrassed? Because guess what? I'm not. And the fact that I'm not embarrassed tells me that it's right for me. And that's really the gauge of everything, isn't it? Is it right for me? Now, would it be right for any one of my sisters? Absolutely, positively not. They would be mortified. Would it be right for me in the past? Absolutely not. I would have been mortified to be seen in public or out in the world anywhere, not even on my front porch, in my pajamas, in curlers, without my hair fixed, without my makeup. Now, guys, I actually did fix my hair. If you're if you're watching the video, you, you can see me if you're just listening to the podcast. You can't see me, but I'm going to tell you right now. I actually curled and fixed my hair this morning and put on some makeup. And my hair is almost stick straight already and sticking out like witch hair. Guess what? That's me. Would it be awesome to have a full makeup crew and a full hairstylist and a, and a wardrobe division for me. Oh yeah, that would be kind of fun and fantasy islandy, right? But it isn't really who I am. I like to show up as who I am so that you know, hey, what you see is what you get. This is me. And I guess that is more important to me than putting on veils, putting on masks, pretending I'm somebody that I'm not. Did I do that for a lot of years in corporate America? <laughs> Absolutely, positively. You know, I, I didn't go to work unless I looked the corporate executive part, that that role. And is that a part of me? Absolutely. Is that a part of me that I embrace anymore? No, because yes, that was me. That was a part of me, but it was only a part of me. It wasn't most of me and most of who I really am. And it wasn't most of what makes me tick and makes me feel good and how I can help other people. Did I learn a ton from those experiences? Yep, sure did. Did I learn that? Books are judged by their cover. People are judged by the way they look. Absolutely. Do I choose to buy into that? I'll tell you what, no, not anymore because everybody isn't great looking. You know, we're, we're blessed with or cursed with whatever we get. And it doesn't matter because it's who you are on the inside, what kind of a person you are, what your values are, what you stand for. And that's going to be what attracts or repels other people from you. And that's what attracts and repels other people from me. Now, maybe it's my shield of protection, which I find that I need in this crazy world of a lot of very unhappy, very negative, very mean spirited people and evil. I need a shield of protection and my being pajama grandma, my robes and my showing up in my pajamas, my doing my videos in my pajamas, I didn't realize it at the time, but if I'm looking at it now with hindsight, it has served me by being my shield of protection. It protects me from 
the BS judgmental nonsense of the world that I don't want to deal with or participate anymore. It protects me because if somebody makes fun of me because I'm showing up in my pajamas, I don't have to take that personally. It shields me from the people that can't see the value that can be created by someone in their pajamas, despite the fact that they're showing up in their robe in their pajamas. So I, it's served me well. It continues to serve me well as a, an actual shield of protection because it filters out the people, and I'm just going to say it, the assholes that I don't want to work with, the negative people, the energy vampires, the people that hurt to work with, that hurt me personally to work with. And is it the best possible filter I could have or come up with? I don't know, but it's very me. I have a history of chronic pain. I am virtually blind. I cannot see. I do anything and anything that I can do. I do what I can with what I've got right now. And right now, it's magnifying glasses. It's ot lights. But am I going to let that stop me? No. It does mean that my makeup's pretty funky. And I probably should have a makeup artist that can do it so I can put my back foot forward. But right now, I am in a big phase of transition. I am rolling out of one phase of my life and into another. And that isn't really conducive to having a whole lot of people that I have to wait for to do what it is that I want to do. And I think that's the biggest reason is that I don't want to wait for. I create my content early in the morning. Most people aren't even up at the time that I am actually creating my content, sharing my videos and making videos and doing things like that. So am I going to have a team of people that show up at three o'clock in the morning to fix me up and clean me up and make me presentable to make the rest of the world happy? Yeah, not going to happen. I'd just rather get up and do it myself, right? And I don't want to wait for other people. I hey, am really impatient and I don't want to wait. I'm not one of those people that wait in line for things unless it's, you know, the Harry Potter book at midnight for my kids to get. I'm not the kind of person that will wait in line at a restaurant. I am not going to wait and depend on a whole bunch of other people to take action or to choose what it is that I need to do with my life. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, but it is who I am. I'm impatient. I'm going to take action and get things done myself versus waiting for other people to help me do things on their time schedule. Um, and does that mean sometimes things are slower? Absolutely. A lot of times if we, you know, collaborate with other people, we can get things done a lot faster and we can create a bigger impact in the world. I do some of those things, but I'm very picky with my partnerships and with my affiliations and what I do and don't do and who I will and will not work with. Have I always been that way? No. Have I gotten burned big time because of that? Absolutely. Didn't choose the right life partner. Didn't choose the right business partner on a couple of occasions. Much to my personal detriment, not only financially, but physically, spiritually, mentally, my health. I mean, one such partnership nearly killed me. So I'm a lot more careful about what I do and what I don't do, who I will and won't work with. And does it mean that I'm a bad person? I don't think so. I think it means that I'm honoring myself more than I ever have in the past. And I think that that's important. So what am I working on for businesses today? 90 day challenge. Today's day 31 of our 90 day challenge. And I'm going to share a strategy or a tactic or a technique to move people ahead and to get more eyeballs on their live videos because I just finished like 10 days on the Epiphany Bridge script. And that was because I wanted to break that down in incredible detail, actually minutia almost, so that the people in the challenge really understand how powerful that script is. And that once they master that, the sky's the limit because you can, you can use that in any aspect or any area of your life to share things with people. So I wanted to share a real, okay, here's a tactic to get attention fast. And because I, I believe in systems and processes and the underlying success system of everything that we do more than these tactics and short-term things and things that come and go that will work and give you a little bump in results, but they're not going to be the thing that you base your whole foundation. They're not going to be the foundation. They're not going to be the thing that you base your whole business, your whole success on because I don't think that's putting your best foot forward. I think throwing together a bunch of little fads and tactics, although they can give you short-term money, and short-term results, they're not going to give you long-term satisfaction and happiness, right? <laughs> I always go for long-term satisfaction and happiness over money. No, it wasn't always that way either. Um, you know, when you're younger and you've got a family at home that you have to raise and are accountable to, you make a lot more choices based on short-term financial 
decisions, short-term decisions than you do long-term things. And I will admit, we pay for those things. We pay for those short-term solutions in the end. You might not see it right now, but I guarantee, at least based on the people that I've observed and, and the experiences I've had, yep, we can add up some of those short-term things. We can take some of those shortcuts, but if we're not building what we're creating on a strong foundation, those shortcuts will come back to haunt us. Or they'll, they'll cause us greater pain in the future than we could have possibly imagined. So go out, make it an awesome day. I'll be back tomorrow to let you know what I'm up to and how it's going. I'm going to do a little, um, maybe I'll do a little recap of the first 30 days of the 90 day challenge. That, that might be what I'll do tomorrow and just share, okay, what's working, what's not, because I found a big thing, a big outage in how I'm personally doing the challenge, not how the challenge is going. I think that's going awesome for other people, but how I'm personally implementing it is off track and I need to get that back on track. That's it. Have an awesome day and I'll record with you tomorrow. Bye. You got this.